Hi, this is Carl, and uh, I'm going to discuss some uh, recent uh, developments and improvements regarding my, uh, my plasma uh, tube creations. Uh, the particular tube we're looking at uh, is one that's appeared in my videos before. Uh, it contains a mixture of xenon, oxygen, and nitrogen, all three of which are necessary to give the green emission. And my current understanding of how this works is that the actual green emission is a band uh, of uh, wavelengths created by the de-excitation of a semi-bound state of the xenon monoxide molecule, XeO. Uh, this is formed, uh, according to the theory, this is formed by the interaction of an excited nitrogen molecule that is an N2 molecule that is not charged, but is, uh, but has uh, an excited electron uh, configuration. The interaction of that with oxygen to create the singlet S excited state of the oxygen atom. That can then combine with the xenon and form a, this temporarily quasi-bound uh, xenon oxide, and that is what uh, de-excites uh, to an unbound state with the release of the elements, xenon and oxygen, and emits this green light. So that's just a little physics refresher, I guess, uh, based on my understanding from uh, some spectroscopy that I've done on the light from these tubes. Um, but really what I wanted to talk about today is the um, socket assembly and the power supply that I now have for these tubes. We can see that the tube is standing upright and it is doing that because it is being held in a black uh, weighted base and um, we see to the right of the base we see a power supply uh, with a high voltage transformer that generates the high frequency uh, 30, kilohertz, uh, 30 kilohertz AC that is used by these electrodeless lamps uh, to, uh, for their illumination. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you some details about the base. Let's go look at one here that has no tube in it. And uh, let me adjust the camera slightly so that uh, hopefully this is more visible. Um, but, uh, This is actually off, but it's close enough to the excited one that it's picking up some uh, some high voltage <laughs> just by uh, just by uh, induction. There, um, these things are lined with a piece of conductive cloth. This is a non-flammable uh, metallic cloth made out of metal, wire, nickel, copper, and so forth. Uh, that is actually what makes contact with the tube, when you put a tube in there, like I'm doing right now, that is what makes contact with the side of the tube when you push it down into the socket. And so you're not putting glass up against metal, uh, you know, solid metal, you're putting the glass in contact with, uh, with this softer uh, conductor. And that's important so you don't scratch the glass and uh, it's also uh, useful for mitigating the amount of ozone generated by that contact. Otherwise, you can get quite a bit of that. The other thing I'd like to discuss in some more detail is the power supply. And obviously, right here, uh, the power supply is a single, uh, uh, well, it powers a single tube. Uh, the actual nature of this thing electrically is it's a simple uh, self-excited bipolar transistor oscillator. This is manufactured by Ramsey. They call it the PG-13, the plasma generator kit. So it is a kit to put it together. I make one modification to this kit, and that concerns the base bias resistor network. And if the camera will please focus. I had hold it. Uh, <laughs> the base bias uh, resistor network has to be modified, so that means replacing two resistors from the kit in order to get sufficient output from this supply. Uh, so I will make these uh, to order, basically, for use with the tubes, 
as I will do with the bases, the socket assemblies, um, or you can order them from Ramsey, and as long as you are willing to do a little bit of modification to the original circuit, you'll end up with something that works very nicely with uh, this type and size of uh, discharge tube. The base, if I can go into a little more detail about its construction, this is a weighted base. It's weighted with lead shot and epoxy. It's acrylic construction except for this cap, which is ABS. That is to keep your fingers away from the top of the uh, metal in there, so when you are putting a tube in or out, uh, you're less likely to get an RF burn when that nasty high voltage arc runs up to contact your finger. So uh, some safety is in mind with this construction. The means of uh, connecting it to the power supply is this uh, banana plug socket on the side. That's currently how I recommend connecting the base to the power supply. There's also feet so that it stands off whatever surface it's on. I still recommend that you not use uh, conductive surfaces uh, for this. I think you should use a wood table or something of that nature. But uh, finally, in conclusion, uh, I'll show off a different a couple different plasma tubes with uh, with uh, this power supply and base combination. We've already seen this one. This is the green uh, 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 xenon oxygen nitrogen tube, um, something that I figured out how to do quite well at this point. Let's uh, let's look at a different tube. Or let's look at this one up close. I'm going to. Uh, um, I may have to adjust the camera to uh, to sh show this very well. I don't know. I'm going to increase that F number so we can see some detail in here. That's quite pretty. If you put your hand on it as I'm doing, what you're doing is increasing the current density in the arc channel. And that forces it to be more filamentary, but you can still see the halo of green around it. Another thing we can hear is the... Uh, the high frequency generated by the oscillator as it is uh, generating the high voltage. Some people may find that objectionable, and that is uh, potentially a reason not to use the Ramsey power supply because it is not in any way adjustable with regard to frequency. It puts out whatever frequency the oscillator runs at, and that is what you're stuck with. So if you want a... Uh, if you want a uh, power supply that can be modified uh, with regard to frequency or voltage output, I would recommend something made by Information Unlimited, and uh, you will pay more for their product. Um, so let's look at a different tube now. I'm going to change this tube, and I'm going to do that simply by, with the power supply still running, I'm going to lift the tube out of the socket. It's that simple. Here's the tube. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put another one in there. The one I'll put in there is a uh, krypton and iodine tube, which makes a beautiful blue light. As I have probably discussed before, the krypton iodine mixture makes the blue light in several bands. In other words, not line specter, but, but bands in the blue. And these bands are present whenever iodine and a noble gas are combined in a discharge tube. They are not characteristics of the pure iodine glow discharge. You don't see any of those bands. And they are not a characteristic of the noble gas by itself either. They occur only when iodine and the noble gas are mixed. And interestingly enough, Again, with regard to the physics, interestingly enough, the, uh, those bands are the same regardless of what noble gas is used. You can use neon and get those same blue bands, the same blue color, argon, xenon, krypton as we have here, so forth and so on. It doesn't matter. You'll still get those blue bands when iodine is present. So my theory, at least with this, and it's less well-developed than my theory of the green tube, uh, is that uh, the noble gas uh, 
atoms collide with iodine and form an excited state of the iodine molecule. And that is what is responsible for these blue bands. Um, but it must be a state that cannot be excited directly in pure iodine, but has to be excited indirectly through collision with the noble gas. Anyway, it is just a theory. If people have another one, uh, if somebody knows why this color is emitted by these mixtures, uh, leave me a comment. I'm very interested. Anyway, let's look at another tube. And again, um, I am simply going to lift this one out of the socket while it is operating. And I know it's kind of hard to see that happen, but it's now obviously out of the socket. And I will put in another one. And um, uh, with regard to what I was just saying, I'm going to put in an iodine and neon tube. And this one, let's take a step back from it. This one you can still see that blue color. You can also see a bright red or pinkish uh, color due to the neon itself uh, mixed with that blue color that is due to the, uh, due to the iodine. Um, this, this tube happens to produce this very uh, sort of lazy arc that is until you actually approach it when it really comes alive. If you're just about touching it, you'll suddenly get it to come alive and the convection pattern uh, in the, uh, the arc uh, becomes a lot more lively with this tube. It likes to be handled and uh, it's also very bright. It's uh, by far the brightest mixture I've, I've, I've made in a tube. I'll also point out this, this one runs at close to atmospheric pressure of neon. The amount of iodine is just that element's uh, vapor pressure, room temperature, but the amount of neon is, is uh, close to atmospheric pressure in this tube. And finally, I'll return to where I began and put the, uh, put the xenon oxide tube in there. And there we are back where we began. If I zoom in, of course, we can get the uh, arc in more detail. So, if there are any questions, if there's interest in purchasing tubes, the socket assembly I showed off, the, the high voltage power supply I discussed, uh, please leave me a uh, message in uh, either a private message or something in the comments. And of course, I'm always interested in uh, discussing the physics of, uh, the physics of these uh, decorative dielectric barrier discharges. And uh, that's, that's it for now.